there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and today I'm going to be showing you how you can take a public domain book from Google Books and you can print it and you can bind it and you can have it for your kids using just dental floss of all things. <laughs> so stay tuned. So I'm going to show you how you can take a public domain book from Google Books in particular and you can print it and bind it and make it pretty and fun for you and your children to use. And so I'm going to show you that I have the PDF file of Pinocchio and you'll see Google Books has, you know, it gives you the cover of the actual book, it gives you all kinds of stuff. I don't print this part. <laughs> I like to go farther in, but this one is illustrated and I like to take advantage of the illustrations and I like it to make it as fun and easy to read as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into print and I'm going to set things up in a particular way that will make it easy. And I'm going to show you. Okay, so first off I'm going to print in grayscale, which only uses your black and white ink, I mean your black ink cartridge. And that's important because if you don't pick this, if it wants black and white and your black and white has run out, it will take your color and make black and white out of it. And then you don't have any color card, any cartridges left. <laughs> so anyway, so I picked that and of course only one copy. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do something kind of interesting to make it so that it's easily printable and easily bindable. And I don't want to waste a whole bunch of paper because this book I think is 215 pages long. If you take off the junk in the front and the back, it's 215 pages long. I don't want to have to print that much. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, take and I'm going to go to multiple. And I'm going to pick two pages per and watch this change here. Do you see that this changed right here? This changed. Now I'm going to say pages up here and I'm going to start on page 10. I've determined that page 10 is actually where I want the book to start when I print it. So I'm going to go to page 10 and I'm going to go through page 225 because page 225 is where the actual story ends and then the rest is just like blank pages and the, the back cover of the book and I don't want that. So I'm going to go through page 225. There we go. Oh, actually I'll go to 226 just to make sure that I get everything. Then I'm going to go ahead and say print on both sides of the paper. And this will save you loads of paper and it will actually read more like a, like a, like a pre-printed book. And then I'm going to say flip on short edge. Do you see right here? And the reason you want that, I will show you why that works out well when I show you the actual printed out pages. Okay. So of course it's going to be, uh, well, it says, I think it'll all automatically pick landscape. You'll see. So as I'm doing this now, we can see where it's already laid out to where it's going to be two pages on each sheet. So that's terrific. And then I would pick print. I would click print and it would print out. Now, after that's done or while it's being printed, then I go and I use Microsoft Publisher to make my covers, but you can use other things. You can use um, Canva. Canva is a really good thing. I think there are some open source um, things that are like Microsoft Publisher that are easy to use. And there's one in particular, and I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you, uh, maybe I'll do some research and find it. But anyway, so I'm going to go here and I am going to design my cover. And what I did for this cover in particular is that I found the Gutenberg um, version of the free book that had color illustrations and so I will show you that and I, this is a color illustration from the Gutenberg book and I will show you I think the pages go up and down here yeah see and what I did is I right clicked on it and I copied it okay copy image and then I pasted it into this page oh sorry then I pasted it into this page and then I took and I did some word art and I made a title and I put the, um, the author there. So then I made it really pretty. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, uh, I also did a um, end piece and that's going to go on the back and I'm going to do this in black and white just to see it on my color. But I like the front to be kind of pretty. And this is the paper that I'm going to be using. And I don't know, let me try to get that closer. And it's a special paper. It's originally a brochure paper. And it's a little thicker than regular paper, but it's not like cardstock. Although cardstock really is a good idea to use. So the next thing I'll show you is everything printed out before I bind it. So here you can see that I have printed everything out. Don't you think it turned out pretty? Oh, it's so pretty! I love color. I love color when I make books. Okay, so this, that's really rich. So there's the cover. Here is one of the pages. And you can see now why I said flip on the short edge. Because, um, because you see, now you can read it like a book. Yeah. So that works out. So I've got the cover and I did the back. There you go. It's in black and white, but it'll just help identify it if it's on its face. And what I've done to protect it, because I don't want all those pretty colors bleeding and all the things that can happen when children get a hold of books. So what I've done is I took one of these. I'm sorry for the glare. There we go. This is from Dollar Tree. You can find them at Walmart. You can find them different places. And what I've done is I have cut it in half and I sliced a little bit of the edge off. And now I'm going to add this into my binding. I'm going to put it on the front and on the back so that it will be somewhat protected. Not perfectly so, but somewhat. And I'm going to use this to do my three-hole punch. Now, you probably don't have one of these because these are extremely expensive, but I inherited this from one of my husband's jobs. And, oh, am I so blessed. <laughs> I can adjust the holes on here in different places. Now, if you don't have this, you know, you could use just a three-hole, I mean, just a regular three-hole punch, or you could use, um, well, no, you couldn't. If you don't have one of these, then you can just use a hand-hold punch and just mark it and do like, I would suggest three, but you could get away with two punches. You could also use just the last two punches on a three, regular three-hole punch and then just do it that way, although it probably won't be as nice feeling when you use it as if you have three. Okay, so you could use the top two and I don't know, you could just you can figure it out, but you, you just need to be able to have at least two punches on the side, hopefully three. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to punch all of these pages and then I'm going to show you how you can take dental floss and some duct tape and just put duct tape on there and it would be, it, it just makes a really nice, really nice little book. So I'll be back. So now we are going to be uh, working on, as I said, using just some dental floss to bind this book. So here I have the, or the book portions that I have three hole punched and I adjusted it smaller, but you could take a handheld punch and make your punches. Just mark it, just use one and you know, just go over and over again. I've had to do lots of things like that in my life. Nothing wrong with a little extra manual labor to get what you want. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to show you how you'll need to have a needle with a big eye. Now this I believe is like a darning needle, I think they call it. And I think this is also a darning needle, but this is like bigger and it's it's bent slightly so like if you were like pulling two things together, but both of these will work. I'm going to show you like I'll take a length of this. We're gonna double it. It's gonna be kind of like if you're doubling your thread sewing. So I'm gonna go like this and I'm going to cut off certain amount. You don't usually have a lot of snarls or anything like you would with regular sewing, so that makes it a lot easier. I think I'll use this needle today, and I will thread it, and I'll pull it through, and we are going to put a knot in the end. Sorry. Put 
the knot in the end. Okay, so what I do is I just kind of pull it down, put it around my finger. There we go, a nice little knot. Now I'm going to take my book. And fortunately, this, this really isn't a science. It's more of an art. So if you don't get it perfect, nobody's going to come and inspect and make sure you did it right. <laughs> you just do the best you can, right? So but I have kind of a technique I've developed where I go through the first hole, and then I'm going to go through the middle of that, and I'm going to pull it. What that's going to do is going to start it like that. Did you see that? I hope we could you know, replay it if you didn't see it. Now I'm going to go through here a number of times. And I make it kind of, kind of tight. This is your binding, so you want to make it tight. I, we use um, dental floss because it's nice and thick and sturdy. You know, it's not going to tear apart very easily. But I think even the wax coating, since almost all dental floss these days is waxed, it just even makes it stronger and makes, you, makes it easier to work with. So now I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to put my needle through here just to kind of finish it up there. Now I'm going to go along the top here and I'm going to go into the next hole. See how easy this is? You thought it was going to be hard, didn't you? <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to pull it like this. Do you see how I did that? See how I did that on top? Okay, okay now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep doing the same thing I did the last time. Make it right there. And it isn't perfect looking over here. You can always catch it again to pull this up. See? So I'm doing that. I'll pull that up there. Now, that makes it a little better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this a number of times so that it's really sturdy. So I'm going to go through here. I'd say about, about maybe uh, four or five times. Just kind of really get it good. Now I'm going to put my needle through this again. Yeah. Now I'm going to go, now hopefully I'll have enough. If not, I'm going to go ahead and make a knot and add some more. It's okay. It'll, you don't really see this part. You, you want to make it sturdy, but it, it doesn't really matter as far as aesthetics are concerned. This is just the part where you are fastening all these pages together. And you'll see they didn't go together perfectly. I mean, I think there's a little bit here. That's all right. You know that not every book that you buy at the store is perfect either, right? So I'm going to have to make a little knot here. I'm going to run out of thread. <laughs> so I'm going to make a little knot. I'm going to just go through here a couple of times. And I'm going to finish it up. Oh, come on, little thing. There we go. I'm going to make a little knot. Now I'm going to, I'm going to cut that thread off. And I'm going to... Uh, get some more thread. So now I'm going to, oh, see, it's waxed, so the wax kind of together. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and cut some more. Don't need that much. There we go. I'm going to thread it, and you know, that's why you have the big eyed needle, because it doesn't take anything to thread this. And you're not going through cloth, so you don't have to have a small needle. But if you had a smaller needle, if that's all you have, you could probably work it out. You just have to be more patient. <laughs> and work a little longer. Okay, so now I'm going to put a knot in the end of this. And I'm going to go the same way I did before. I'm going to go ahead and, and put my needle through that loop to make it more sturdy. And I think I'm going to have to go through a few more times on this one, simply because I did have to use a another another um, another piece of dental floss and I want it to really be sturdy. So I'm going to go ahead and go through here a number of times. Now I'm going to make me a little knotty. A little knot. And I'm going to be 
finished with this portion. And then the next part, which will finish everything up, I'm going ahead and I'm going to put some duct tape on there. Now I will show you the duct tape I have chosen. It's this. It looks like a burlap sack. I probably could have just gotten some tacky glue and burlap. <laughs> no, but this will probably be a little better because it's waterproof and um, it will probably stick to this plastic better, I think. So I'm going to take and I'm going to tear a portion of this or cut a portion of this. I don't know if you're, you're like me, but I have trouble using scissors with duct tape, you know, to measure something because I don't know, scissors and duct tape just don't mesh. I'm going to actually tear this and then I'm going to put it on. Now, the idea, I mean, is just to cover these holes and make it look like a binding. So you kind of put it up on as best you can here. Ah, there we go. See? It's starting to look like a book already, isn't it? Then I'm going to pull it on this side, put a little taut. And I'm going to, sorry for the glare, I'm going to pull this over here. And now, we're almost finished, almost finished. Now all I need to do is trim this portion. And as soon as that's done, I'll show you the end product. So here it is. Here's the book. As you can see, you can here's the here's the cover page, and I have the front pages. Some of them, you know, it has who wrote it and who published this version, uh, who the illustrator was. Oh, isn't it sweet? It's going to be so fun for my daughter to read this book. I'm so excited. And that's all there is to it. And you know, you don't really have to have a lot, a lot of stuff to make these books. If the book is um, short enough, you can even just staple it right here. I've done that a number of times. And then just do the same thing with the cover and the mat and the duct tape. And it works out really nicely. So I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope to show you more stuff. I'm also going to show to you um, different types of other bindings you can do to enjoy the free things you can find online. So stay tuned. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.